Hello guys, um, I thought I'd do a, a little, since I did a best finds of 2021 for my minerals and arrowheads, um, and since I'm one of my, a friend of mine and a subscriber of the channel, um, asked for a best fossil finds of 2021, I thought I'd do a small video on that too. I was thinking, at first I was thinking of doing just a shorts video, that was my original idea, but then when my friend requested, I thought I'd just do a full video. So, we're gonna have a full video, hopefully, of all the finds that I found uh, in 2021 on the fossil hunting trips I did. I did uh, three trips in total, one to Hungry Hollow in Arcona, Ontario, one down south to um, St. Thomas where there, uh, a friend of mine and a subscriber, Kate, she showed me a couple of her secret collecting spots for fossils, and that was a lot of fun. And um, the third was to the decommissioned Queenston Quarry in uh, St. Catharines, Ontario. My number eight find are these uh, varying species of horn coral that I found at um, Hungry Hollow. I believe these are these are three different types. Maybe these two are the same, but I think they might be different. As you can see, they're both a type of horn coral species. It's really cool. You can see it's still got it, it would have been covered in some kind of outer covering, and then if the covering gets damaged, it would reveal the inner structure of the coral like this and this this piece of horn coral is cool because the top is different so these these ones have a kind of like striations there there are lines in the top whereas this one and this one's actually part of my channel banner it's so unique that i thought i put it there this one has these bumps and like just kind of bubbles and stuff on its head instead. So I thought that was really fascinating. I'll try and put up the species names for these in like the corners so that people know what they are exactly for those interested in the the type type of species. And interesting about these is they have little tiny other creature fossils that were attached to them. And sometimes there's some really interesting ones that are you can find attached. You can find like little sea stars and little snails and stuff like that and worms and stuff. But yeah, this is my number eight find. Here's my number seven find. It's a stromatolite I found at the Queenston Quarry. Um, I cut and polished this one. That'll be actually, this will show up in a up and coming video where I polish a bunch of stones. Um, fortunately, this guy just due to the crystal structure and stuff, it just has too many like pores and stuff. Um, now, how do I know that this is a stromatolite and not a stromatoporoid? As because those are often mistaken for each other. Well, with stromatoporoids, there's often lots of structure to them, whereas stromatolites tend to just be lines. Uh, and um, often, I, I, I've I found, interestingly enough, when I post about these stromatolites I find in southern Ontario, people think that they're stromatoporoids because of all the structures in here. And the structures are actually due to the mineralization. So the, the dolomite, so this is mainly, I believe, dolomite and calcite would be the two mineral minerals in, in found in he, these um, stromatolites. And I actually have a specimen that has a void in it that actually has a pocket of dolomite crystals and dog tooth calcite crystals. It's a really interesting special slash mineral specimen. Um, but anyways, uh, the reason this is a stromatolite and not a stromatoporoid is you, you, in a stromatoporoid, you'll have these basically like these little pores is the best way to describe them. But their technical term, I believe, is galleries. And they'll be lined up in lines. And then you'll have these striations, which are known as pillars, going um, perpendicular, basically, to these gallery lines. And it's this 
the specimen is missing both the galleries and the, the striated pillars, as they're called. That's their technical term. So I know that this is a stromatolite and not a stromatoporoid. Also, I've I always double check with local collectors and people who are much have been collecting for long a lot longer. And when talking to local collectors, we find stromatolites here and not really stromatoporoids at all. My number six find doesn't really actually fit on the uh, in the camera view, but it's a large piece of coral that I collected from the Queenston Quarry, and it's got all different. It's got mainly chain coral, you can see here, and it's been nice and exposed because this rock has been out in the weather, and so it's been slowly etched away by acidic rain and stuff. I'm, I might actually put this in a light acid bath to clean it off a little more and try and make the structure pop a little more, but it's got some, like, it's got a lot of um, chain coral, but it's got other interesting fossilized structures, and, and this was a big chunk that I managed to... Uh, uh, chip off of a larger boulder well uh, well uh, at the Queenston quarry a really cool find I think so here is my number five favorite find uh, these are some really nice brachiopods that I collected in st. Thomas with my friend Kate um, this one is especially cool because I'll try and put this once again I'll try and put up the species this one actually has some little corals or some kind of other fossilized animal growing on the shell right where my nail is you see that kind of darker gray bit that's some kind of other fossilized creature i'll try and maybe take some macro pictures and hopefully those will show the show the um structure much better but this is just a beautiful one and we so the place she showed me had some interesting geography and there were two spots and as we were leaving the first spot, that's when we, we found this one. And it's just very nice. And then there are these two. Just nice shapes. This is a little different from other brachiopods, but this is the brachiopod itself. Um, and then there's this piece of brachiopod. It's just super shiny. It almost reminds me of Mother of Pearl. That's why I love like it so much. But very pretty little brachiopod specimens. My number four find is this partial pirate, uh, um, um, partial fossil. It's uh, piratized. I believe it's a, like a mini ammonite or ammonoid. I, I forget exactly what the ter correct term is. I'm not a, I am not as well versed in fossils as I am in minerals, so I'm s still very much a learner. But you can see the beautiful sutures, as they're called, and these are like the separate chambers of the creature. And it's just a beautiful little piratized specimen. And I found this one at Hungry Hollow during my Hungry Hollow trip. My number three find doesn't seem super special. What you see is little shards. And what it is is little shards of prehistoric fossil, uh, uh, prehistoric bony armored fish. I believe they're, they're known as placoderms or something like that. And here you can see the, these are just little bits of the armored, the armored fish. Um, and actually, so these were found at Arcona. And one of the interesting things about this fish bone is that you can tell it's the fish bone because it shows up blue. And you can see this one is a great example. You see how it's, how the um, fish bone is like a light blue color. So that's how you know it's fish bone. And these fish had bony armor on them, like outer armor. So it's like super cool to find pieces. And actually the um, the leader of the trip found like this really nice, like rectangular piece, like plate of fish bone armor about this size. Like it was amazing. And I got lucky enough to find just a little tiny fragment of, fish bone armor and you can tell it's the uh, armor because it's got these these bumps it'll basically have like these bumps and ridges and, and that's how you can tell that this is the outer armor and not just a fragment of fish bone itself 
so here are some more fossilized fragments. These are actually, well, fossilized and then one whole one. Um, these are actually trilobites. So these were all from the Hungry Hollow trip as well. Um, here's the biggest piece of trilobite that I found on that trip. If it could focus, sorry, give me a second. There we go. Very nice headpiece. You can see this is the nose and then there's a partial eye over here. It would have been very nice if this guy had been whole. That would have been a very nice sized um, trilobite. And then there's a whole bunch of these just bits. Like here's an, a singular eye piece from a trilobite. And there were a lot of like these, uh, sorry, forgive me. I gotta grab these. It's kind of hard. Tried to film and grab stuff at the same time. There were like these little head pieces. There we go. Here's a head of a trilobite. And there's like one spot in the Hungry Hollow at the bottom where you can find lots of bits. And sometimes if you're lucky, you can find a whole one. And there was one guy who found a really nice big whole one that trip at the bottom. And then there was there was also a roller found and a couple other rollers. And I was actually the only whole trolley bike that I got out of this that I got from this trip was one that was gifted to me. And here's a roller. They're called rollers because they roll up on themselves. So this one got rolled up and its head it head kind of got crushed on this side. And it actually got covered by a smaller tail. But this is, in fact, a whole little rolled up trilobite specimen. Last but not least, my favorite, my first, my first place, my top tier finds of 2021. I already showed these in my, uh, as honorary mentions in my rock hounding video. But these were two crinoid calexes I found at the, on my hungry hollow trip. This one is of a Galberto crinus, I believe that's the species. I'll put up the species names in the corner, of course. But this is a beautiful example. It got partially crushed here, so you can really see the plates of the calyx very nicely. And you'll see here on the top, this is where the stalks, the little arms of the calyx would have attached to. And then at the base, it would have attached to its singular like anchoring stock basically i don't know the technical terms so fossil people don't get too angry at me if i'm butchering this because i i know i'm am but yeah very cool little uh, well little this is a really nice sized calyx and then there's here's a smaller one of a different species i believe believe this is like a calypso crinus or something like that i'll uh of course post some nice uh, close-up pictures of this one because the details are kind of hard to see but this one's got a bit of its arm still attached it arms still attached like bits of its arms and this one is actually piratized I have some honorable mentions here these two were gifts so I did not collect them but they were gifted to me by my friend Kate when I went down to visit her in St. Thomas and go fossil collecting with her. One is this awesome little full trilobite. I'll of course include this species. I believe this one is actually a, a, a rarer species of trilobite in, in the region of Canada and you can see or region of Ontario and you can see there's a whole one here and then there's actually one beside the tail and there's like smaller ones there's like a lot of trilobites in here. There's like, I, I believe, a head over there, tail over there, a really small tail up here. But then there's this whole guy, and this one's a, of a rarer species. Then there's also this, what's called a goniatite. It's not, it, it looks like an am, ammonite. I believe it's related or it's part of like the same family, but it is, is a different type of species of fossil. This one is piratized. And this this is this is the nicer side. This one like kind of like ammonites. They have these sutures they're called, and where you can basically see their internal structure. But it's a very cool fossil. Both of these are amazing, and they're wonderful gifts. And I really appreciate that Kate gifted these to me. Thank you guys for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and all the fossils that I showed. I really enjoyed fossil hunting, the fossil hunting. So I, I hope to plan for more trips in the future. I've met some really cool people through my clubs and through my YouTube channel and become friends with them. And they're really cool fossil collectors and they're much more knowledgeable than me. And um, hopefully I, I'll be able to um, plan some trips with them and show you guys some more awesome fossils.